So over back in Spray Bay, what I've got here is good old Tamiya's XF53 Neutral Grey. So this is what I am going to use for the underside shade, shall we say. So this is just going to be a base layer. Uh, we're going to do a lot of effects over the top of this, but I just want a, you know, a solid neutral grey colour to start off where I'm hopefully going to go with it. All right. Um, as for the olive drab, I think I'm going to go down the attacker route because I've got some, if I'm honest. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm trying to use some paint up that I've got so I can um, rotate, shall we say, get rid of some and and replace with others. So pretty much this will be what I'm planning on doing with this sort of section of painting is is just using the wing of what I'm going to do with the rest of the aircraft instead of sort of chopping and changing. I think. Just, just going through the process with one wing, you will get the idea of what I'm going to do with the rest of the um, with the rest of the model. So, all right. Without further ado, we will get some base coat on it. Well, again, the XF fifty three. I've just knocked it down with a bit of leveling thinner, probably seventy percent thinner, thirty percent paint. Pretty thinnish mix. Again. This is just going to be my way of doing it. There's going to, you know, everybody else has got the, the way of, of painting things. I mean, I did toy with sort of a black undercoat and going off that, um, and then, you know, um, what was the one I was thinking of? Actually, it's an aluminium silver, you know, an aluminium coat and build it up like that. But like I said, there's that many ways of doing it. I'm just going to stick to a pretty basic way but actually quite an effective way I think so all right without further ado we will get on I'll quit the waffle because um like I say the camera's running and you know once the extractors on and the uh, and the compressor kicks in then you know there's not much point actually sort of talking to be honest so you know you've seen myself and probably Phil spray enough times to know really what what's going on so yeah it's just gonna be uh, one of them sit back relax and watch the process
Right, so we've got a good even coat of the neutral grate down. Okay, that's gone off. Looking really nice and smooth and flat. So next one I'm going to do is whack a coat of olive drab on the top. So that same lays down all the base colours. So a couple of options for this. You can either use um, XF58, which is olive green rather than olive drab. Olive drab tends to be a bit dark. And plus if, if you're using the Tammy one, they've changed the formula. So it's not really US olive drab anymore. I think that's more of an armour colour anyway. Uh, or the armour shade of olive drab. So XF58 is a good alternative, obviously, for aircraft. Again, it's just a base coat. We're going to be chucking things in it and out of it and shaking it all about to get a worn and weathered effect. The other option we've got is obviously Attacker 1. Attacker, I think, did two options for Olive Drab. This is um, CO18, which is the, the late one. Okay. Technically, we're doing a mid-war one, so either or, again, it's just a base coat I think I'm not going to get tied down with different sort of shades and hues and whatever of olive drab irrelevant for me at the minute because it's going to have so many other tints and, and uh, tones put in it it doesn't really matter so enough waffle again move over to the spray bay I'll get the airbrush loaded up and we'll get the olive olive drab base coat on and then after that the fun will begin
So I'm just going to do a quick demo on chipping. So what I've done here is painted the cow's LP11. All right, that's gone off and got a bit of chipping fluid. So any chipping fluid, I've just got the Micromass one, but you know, the choice is yours. The other thing as well is if you can get some packing sponge, like so, just move that one out of the way. Okay, I'll use that one because it ain't got the tape in it. So, bit of packing sponge, it's going to be like the chipping technique really, so you could just dip some in, get some on your thing and then basically then just dab a bit where you want it just to keep silver. Alright. So you can put as little or as much of this on as you want. Anywhere where there's access ports or, you know. Like so. Right, I don't want to chip these up too much, but I just want a bit of wear on them. And if it um, turns out to be overdone, you just pet over them anyway. So. Again, obviously this is a quite a quick and easy technique for, for doing a bit of wear and tear. I'm going to leave it at that. So we'll let that dry off and then we'll give that a coat of olive drab and um, neutral grey and then we'll come back and peel it off and see see how the chipping comes out. So I've got the base colours down as you can see. So next job is to obviously remove the masking fluid. Alright so in true Blue Peter fashion I've already done one. Okay, just to see how it's going to turn out and as you can see we've got some definite chipping going on there again some of that I might actually repay over um, it is a bit strong in places but obviously for demo purposes you kind of want to see the contrast as you can see a bit of, bit of pre-shading going on as well or post-shading just underneath with the grey but yeah so So basically what I've got to do is just reactivate this, get your nails under it, like so, and it should just peel off. Again, the thicker you put it on, the easier it is to get off. And again, another method I've found is, you know, just reactivate it with a cocktail stick it should just drag it off there we go you can kind of feel it underneath it when you start to uh, rubbing it over and it will just sort of go like right there look so Best thing is after you've painted is actually not to leave it for too long. Like I say, being I've used lacquers on this, it can kind of be counterproductive to getting this stuff back off. Have I found out in the past we're doing canopies with it, it tends to uh, weld itself down and it's a it's real pain in the backside to get back off, but. Nothing more complicated than that look. So there you go. Yeah. 
I reckon you can use air spray technique with this or if you're confident with a brush you could do brush chipping another method I might try actually is it I've seen it done with um, like pencils silver weathering you know the watercolor pencils not tried that technique I don't know if that'll be any good for me or not but again all these techniques again is is personal choice and preference yeah, you can get some nice chipping as I say if you really want to do a heavily chipped sort of aircraft then this would be a bad a bad way to go and if you do it into Japanese you know it can be heavily weathered then you know also as well with you can look scratching effect and that's obviously just scratching through the uh, original base coat there's a little bit there you go There you go, quick little chipping demo with using masking fluid. Okay, let me just take your cocktail stick if you're not over happy with how the chipping's gone and just touch it up to your preference. So I said this is probably going to get twitched up by me anyway. Once you find it again, I mean this has been a couple of days for me, so since I did it, so really if you're doing it straight away you can obviously see where your chipping fluid is, but or masking fluid should I say. Yeah, high traffic areas where there's going to be a lot of maintenance, uh, hatches, stuff like that, and it's, it's it's ideal. So it was a mess. So yeah, there we go. Just a quick chipping demo. <laughs>